welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for joining me this week. So this week I'm going to be exploring Google Notebook LM's new expert notebooks. They've partnered with lots of different organizations to provide some expert notebooks that we can explore. So if you're interested in coming to find out about those beautiful expert notebooks, then please keep on watching. Okay, you can see that I'm on the Google Announcements page where we have the featured notebooks and there's a little summary here. So I'm going to go through the summary and then I'm going to show you the actual featured notebooks. So they've started off with a small selection. This was released July 14th. Let me just scroll down here. They're actually on the front page and we can listen to the article, of course, because we know in a Google Notebook LM we can generate little podcasts. And I'll show you in a moment how we can actually tailor the podcast and give more instructions so that we don't have a podcast that's 20 minutes long, that's irrelevant or not focusing on the ideas that we want to focus on. So here are the notebooks that are, first of all, being released. We've got Longevity Advice from Eric Topol, and he's the best-selling author of Super Ages. I can't wait to look at that. As I'm getting older, uh, I'm looking at the importance of longevity and health span and trying to stay healthy. So I can't wait to uh, explore that one with you. Uh, we've got expert analysis and predictions for the year 2025 by The Economist. So, you know, for me, it's really important that we have good sources and references to be able to gather and explore information. You know, I, I actually don't like to go to any large language model and ask for information straight away. Uh, if I do, and it gives me the references, I always like to check the sources. So I still read original research articles, news articles, The Economist. So I think with these special notebooks, we'll be able to ensure that the information given to us is more accurate because the notebook LM only draws from the information in the folder and the sources that you give it. Okay, so we've got an advice notebook, how to build a life, excellent. Science fans guide to visiting Yellowstone National Park. Uh, an overview of long-term trends in human well-being by the University of Oxford. And I'm just so glad that they decided to launch notebooks that focus on well-being and longevity. And then there's another one on science-backed parenting advice. The complete works of William Shakespeare. Wow, that's going to change classrooms completely because students will be able to ask questions and interact within that Shakespeare notebook. And we've got a notebook tracking the Q1 earnings report from the top 50 public companies. So if you're interested in that business side. So here there's a little 30 second video. Um, I won't uh, play that because I want to actually explore. Now there's another new feature on the Google um, Notebook LM and that's that you can publicly share your notebooks now. So if you do, for example, write original work that you want to share or research that you do want to share, there's a publicly available link that you can generate. And it says over the past four weeks, more than 140,000 public notebooks have been created on a wide range of topics. Absolutely fantastic. So then there's some testimonials here from The Economist. I mean, this is phenomenal. OK, so let's go and have a look at the notebook. So uh, I've just opened up my notebook LM page. Uh, greetings from Sydney. I didn't have to use my VPN this time to open up. I've got my notebooks here all and then featured notebooks. And so here are the ones that uh, are, here are the ones that were outlined in that blog article. And I'm going to explore, I think, the trends in health. So let's open that up. I'm going to make myself smaller because I'm, I'm kind of in the way. So let me move myself here and then let's have a look at the documents that they have in this folder. Child mortality, big problem in brief, clean water, democratic rights, democratic transition, economic inequality by gender. OK, etc. Look, look at all the sources they've actually put down here. So um, let's have a look at the summary. Where is real progress happening in the world and where are we falling behind? The Oxford based organization Our World in Data answers these questions with invaluable dispatches on long term trends in poverty, health, well-being, violence 
environmental change and other key indicators. Take a look at the mind map because you know we can generate mind maps. Um, take a look at the mind map to get a sense of the scope of their work or take an audio deep dive into the causes of specific trends, including the decline of fertility and the upward trend in literacy rates. Or chart your own path through the state of our species in the chat. So visit the Our World in Data website to read additional reports and explain their extensive collection of interactive charts. Yeah, I think I'm going to make another video about that and look at all the data uh, on that website. So here, how to get the most of this workbook. So they've already got some notes. So here, let me just move myself over here. Okay, this is a featured notebook to really help us understand the research and look at all the papers again that um, it uses as sources. Uh, let's say explore the chat. Okay, so let's go back to here. And uh, it's also got uh, some, a study guide. Why are fertility rates dropping? Unraveling global progress. 10 facts about human well-being. Okay, I want to read this one. This is really interesting for me. So Number one, the unprecedented halving of global fertility rates in just six decades. That's interesting. And I, of course, Google Notebook always puts the link to the sources so we can go directly to the source. Number two, humanity's profound achievement in reducing extreme poverty. OK, so great. Wonderful. That seems to be an achievement here. Just two centuries ago, a staggering three quarters of the global population lived in extreme poverty, lacking even the most basic necessities like adequate shelter and nutrition. This dire reality was once considered inevitable, but sustained economic growth and technological advancements have dramatically altered the landscape. Today, our world in data reports that extreme poverty is the reality for less than one in 10 people worldwide, marking one of the humanity's most impressive historical achievements. OK, that's really encouraging. Let's have a look. Global life expectancy more than doubled in uh, two centuries. OK, so by 2019, uh, the average age will be over 72 years compared to less than 30 years, it says on average before. Number four, modern fertility declines occur at unprecedented speeds. That's, that's, mm, that's a concern. I wonder what the reason is that is. I'll have to yeah, delve into that a little bit later. Famines are increasingly a man-made tragedy in the man in the modern era. That's interesting. Number six, the surprising role of television in changing social norms and fertility. Really? OK, so that might be an interesting read as well for you. I'll put the link um, to Notebook LM below and then you can explore all of the uh, featured notebooks. Number seven, the dramatic reversal of global literacy rates. OK, so that's a, a positive, encouraging finding. In a remarkable shift over the last two centuries, the global literacy landscape has been completely transformed. Our world in data highlights that as recently as 1820, only about one in 10 people worldwide possessed the ability to read and write. Today, that ratio has been inverted. Wonderful news. A vast majority of global population is now illiterate with only one in 10 remaining illiterate. So we've completely reversed that. The monumental progress, particularly accelerated since the mid 20th century, underscores a global prioritization of investment in basic education. Absolutely. OK, number eight, the consistent pattern of the demographic transition across diverse cultures. OK, interesting. Number nine, urban living is a profoundly recent human development. OK, and number 10, failing. No, it says falling. I don't have my glasses on. Falling transport and communication costs powered globalization second wave. So what is this about? The period following World War II, often called the second wave of globalization, saw an explosive increase in international trade. Our world in data points to a key driver. Drastic reductions in transaction costs for sea freight, passenger air travel and international phone calls. In fact, I don't even know many people that pay for international calls anymore with all of the apps that we have. 
These technological advancements made it economically viable to trade not just vastly different goods into industry trade, but also similar goods and intermediate products intra industry trade, fostering greater specialization and integration of global supply chains, fundamentally reshaping the world economy. Okay, so that was an interesting article. Uh, let me just go back to all of the featured ones. I'm going to look at one more that I'm interested in. Uh, I think it would be the secrets of super ages. Absolutely. I've watched a lot of documentaries uh, on uh, the aging secrets of super ages and, you know, trying to look after your health and your health span as you get older. And so let's just have a look. Get health and longevity advice by drawing on the expertise of best-selling author Eric Topol, a professor at the Scripps Research Institute and one of the most cited researchers in all of medicine. Ask lifestyle questions about diet, sleep, or exercise, and get detailed science-backed recommendations based on Topol's latest book, Super Ages, and his popular substack, Ground Truths. Okay, all right, so let me just have a look at the notes that were already generated, and let me see, okay, the benefits of exercise. What should I focus on? Okay, let's have a look at diet. What should I focus on? Just move myself again over here. I'm going to skim read this and just highlight some of the really important ideas from this. Okay, so the systematic assessment across 195 countries found that a poor diet is linked to 22% of all deaths, okay, which is more than tobacco, cancer, or hypertension. Wow. Okay, so here's some important dietary aspects to focus on to enhance your health span. Notice how it's not about lifespan. I think it's about health span because we want to have quality of life. Even if we live a long life, it has to be quality life, right? So health span. Uh, prioritize whole and unprocessed foods. I, I couldn't agree more. You know, we have so many processed available foods everywhere. And I think it's so important that we try to make that conscious decision to eat whole unprocessed foods, foods that are in the natural form. So I couldn't agree with that more. And then there's, of course, there's some research here and, and some statistics to uh, really support that idea of it lowering cardiovascular yeah, diseases. Okay, the Mediterranean diet, we know a lot of researchers supported that. And and if I just have a quick look, that involves olive oil, nuts, fruits, vegetables, fish, legumes, and white meat over red meat, discouraging soda, which is full of sugar, commercial baked goods, and spread fats. Okay, even a modified green MED diet has shown advantages in lowering cholesterol, inflammatory markers, blood pressure and weight. So again, the Mediterranean diet you'll notice is really focusing on whole foods, olive oil, nuts, fruits, vegetables. It's all whole foods and unprocessed. Okay, let's have a look at the rest of the article. Strictly limit ultra processed foods. So there is a scale in terms of processed food and ultra processed food is probably the worst for you. And these are described as alien industrially produced unnatural substances that are not even food. I would agree. There are sometimes I go to the supermarket, I pick up a packet of something. It's not even food. It's all just chemicals put together. And I don't want to be putting that into my body. I don't want to be ingesting that. They often contain numerous additives and industrial ingredients like coloring agents, various sweeteners, hydrogenated oils and emulsifiers and undergo physical changes like molding, extrusion, uh, that maximize digestibility and accelerate absorption, leading to blood glucose and insulin spikes. Okay, and the evidence against ultra processed foods is compelling. So I'm going to just put that, um, this link in. This is a really important finding, I think. There's lots of statistics here about how bad ultra uh, how bad ultra processed foods are for us and regular consumption of ultra processed uh, red meat, for example, is linked to 40 percent, no, 14, <laughs> not quite 40, 14 percent high risk of dementia and ultra processed foods are also associated with fatty liver disease, most types of cancer, sleep disorders, inflammatory bowel disease, depression 
and a 62% increase in all cause mortality with more than four servings per day. I can't stress how important it is to try and stay away from ultra processed food. And I think, you know, if you're not sure whether it's ultra processed or even processed, I think the rule is just stick to whole food. If you can see the food in its natural form, and for example, a carrot, a potato, even a salad, that's in its natural form, all fruits and vegetables in its natural form, then that is a whole food. Okay, then it says practical steps reduce ultra processed food. Read the labels, you know, know what you're ingesting, know what you're putting into your body. And then it also says here, okay, manage carbohydrate, protein, and fat quality. Okay, so I think, you know, it's about the quality of carbohydrates, I feel. A lot of ultra processed food has really unhealthy uh, carbohydrates. So it says the type of carb matters. So they're not all equal. Carbohydrates are not all equal. So prioritize good unprocessed carbs from non starchy vegetables, legumes, fruits, and whole grains. Okay. And then it says, in contrast, low quality, fast digesting carbs like refined grains and potato products cause insulin spikes and predispose to weight gain and are linked, linked to increased cardiovascular deaths. OK, so also manage protein. I went through it all, all of that. Uh, you know, manage your fat intake. Oh, this is something I need to be careful of because I actually do use stevia, but that's the most natural form of sweetener. So let's see what it says. Sugar sweetened beverages are a main source of added sugar and consistently linked to increased all cause cardiovascular and cancer related mortality, as well as a more than threefold increase in arterial fibrillation risk. Now it says artificial sweetness have conflicting data. Some like these artificial ones have been associated with cardiovascular and um, you know other diseases and impaired ooh, glucose regulation, though they are generally less concerning than high sugar consumption. And stevia, that's the one that I use, stevia appears to be less worrisome than others. Okay, salt we know is linked to hypertension and then here it says reconsider alcohol and meat, yeah, red meat rather. We know that, you know, there's a long standing myth that red wine benefits uh, our health. And so it's not having a glass of red wine is healthy for us. Alcoholic beverages are actually classified as carcinogenic and it's a toxin, it's a poison at the end of the day. You're putting poison into your body. And I'm not saying that I don't drink alcohol at all, but I think just to be mindful of what we're ingesting, right? Red meat again as well. Um, and what does it say? Like hot dogs, which is ultra processed. Bacon sausages are considered carcinogenic and linked to the highest risk of mortality. Uh, that was a little bit confronting because, you know, obviously I do include some of these uh, in my diet. And I think that we all just need to be really mindful and try and focus on ingesting and consuming more whole foods and healthier foods. OK, so that was all of the featured notebooks uh, on Google Notebook LM. Thank you so much for releasing such a wonderful resource. And now there are featured ones where we can rely on the source that you're drawing upon. And, you know, sources from Oxford University, like the world of data, sources about Shakespeare, sources from The Economist, which is what I would be checking anyway if I was looking at any uh, large language model generated content. So thank you so much for joining me this week and I hope to see you next time.